Hello, hello. I am introducing my class, um, my course titled Introduction to Sociology. I am going to tell you here a little bit who I am, but this course is geared towards um, the college students at Jomo Kenyatta University who are taking occupational therapy or any other students that I could be teaching. Um, just that's why you have been sent here or anybody else that wants to learn about sociology. So my names are Dr. Eunice Menjar. I want to say that I have a few qualifications. I had acquired an associate degree in civil engineering from University uh, Jomo Kenyatta University. I also did a uh, further into a different area. I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in human development and family science and additional specialization in marriage and family therapy from Oklahoma State University. And I also have a PhD in community resource management from Kenyatta University. So, um, Karibuni, we are going to be discussing psychology. What I can say is karibu means so, um, karibu means welcome in Swahili. So I want to welcome you to the sociology safari with me. We are diving into the Masai Mara of human behavior. If you have never been to Kenya, that is one of the greatest safaris that you can take. Where instead of sporting zebras in this course, we are going to decode the stripes of our society. So I want you to grab your metaphorical binoculars because we are about to investigate why relationships migrate. The elusive species called teenage rebellion, the dating pressures by college students, launching, um, joining a family or uh, for couples who are getting married. We talk about empty nesting, you know, when we get older, our, you know, our children are launched into college or into marriage and uh, things like that. So, and everything in between. So let the sociological adventure begin now. And what I'm going to talk about today is I will be asking the question if you have if you have to answer this question the question is what is sociology the definition of sociology that is usually used and that is going to be used for this class it is that sociology is defined as a systematic study of human society patterns of social relationships and the influence of various factors on individual as well as group behavior. So we're talking about how people behave, how a society is um, is grouped into smaller cultural groups, uh, the relationships that people have with institutions and amongst themselves and any other factor that does influence um, individual or group beha behavior. So sociology is supposed to examine how individuals interact with social societal structures and also sociology explores topics such as culture institutions like you know Jomo Kenyatta University is an institution or any other college that you're attending can be considered an institution social norms and inequality um, so when we use sociology we also want to seek and understand some of the complexities of human behavior by analyzing social patterns, institutions, and the impact of broader social forces on individuals and communities. So you can define sociology using any of these terms in an exam. Through empirical research and theoretical framework, sociology aims to uncover or unfold the dynamics shaping societies and how they shape the lives of people within them so let's continue and i know that some of you have already started wondering how am i going to use sociology in my course some of you are taking occupational therapy or you're in medical school 
Um, so you're probably wondering, how can I apply sociology? Or how is sociology important to me? So some of the things that sociology makes us wonder is when you're talking about even human behavior. So you might also ask yourself, you know, we using sociology is college choices. How do people end up making choices on where to go to college, on whether to go to college? Even wonder why you are in college yourself. Well, some of your classmates are still in high school or took a different path. They went straight to work. Others are, you know, probably doing nothing. Uh, sociology does help us to explore some of these factors that influence our choices for education and where that leads us to. So with using sociology, we can also navigate some of the other human dynamics, like, for example, how does the social world operate? Sociology, sociology dives into intricacies of human relationships. And as I said, how people relate, the social norms, how people get to be socialized in certain norms and the various forces that shape our interactions and decisions. So those are some of the things that when you are thinking about sociology that you could be wondering when you're in this class. Um, so sociology also make you wonder why humans or even employees behave in a certain way. So for example, have you ever wondered why sometimes even in Kenya we have lecturer strike? Why do we have doctors strike? You know, sometimes you can ponder some of those questions and ask. Sociology can shed light on the dynamics of workplaces or work issues that could lead to even um, employees to strike or have a ghost law. It can help us understand the reasons behind strikes and their impact. So, you see how you can apply sociology and maybe even students. Why do students strike? Why do students go on a strike or, um, you know, go have a go slow at school or a sit down or whatever you call it. And some other times you can also use sociology to ask questions like why you are in class sitting down right now listening to this lecture and not in bed or somewhere else. So sociology unravels the routines and societal expectations that shape our daily lives, including why some classes are taught online and why others are taught in person. Like, for example, now you're probably taking this class online or I'm making you listen to this video and what makes you listen to it and what makes you choose to listen it because sociology can probably answer that question. Okay. So many other things that sociology will make us wonder, you know, I ever wondered why as an occupational therapist, you are required to take this course called sociology. Okay. I asked that question again. Well, it is, you are, um, you know, it is probably your passport to understanding the reasons why people behave the way they do when you have a very sick person and you're telling them you cannot walk on your foot you have to use a walking stick because you're going to um you know break your leg more or things like that you can use sociology because it helps you understand why people behave the way they behave so social differences detectives that's what you become when you understand sociology because sociology is like our secret agent lenses they help us to look into the mysteries behind why people act the way they do from quirky habits to diverse behaviors. So we're going to be decoding the epic saga of social differences using this class. You can also be opportunity detectives using sociology. You can become an opportunity detective. Ever curious about why some groups seem to have more opportunities than others? You know, you have, for example, in a country like Kenya, we do know that some people have more opportunities than the others, depending on where they live, part of the country where they were born, or even 
the different colleges may have may offer different opportunities for their students sociology equips us with the tools to be opportunity detectives to be able to uncover the secrets behind group outcomes and the paths they take different groups take all right so let's keep going um <clears throat> So sociology is really interested in patterns in societies, in different societies. It doesn't have to be just one society like Kenya. The whole of Kenya is a society. We do know that the tribes are societies, um, you know, and many other societies that we have because those subgroups can be are called societies. So what is a society? A society is defined as the aggregate of people living together in a more or less ordered community. So you can call Kenya is a society, but you can also have sub subgroups that also de define society. So we do have people who have drugs, cartels, and they do crime together, and those can also be even those smaller societies that could be doing illegal behavior, they can be danger to um, society. Okay? So society is like a big, diverse family where we all live and interact. It is a community around us, from starting from our friends, our family members that including our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our siblings, the neighbors in our villages or in our cities to the larger groups that we belong to. So if you belong to Kikuyu or Kambar tribe, society is where we share our values, we share our norms, and all those other unwritten rules that shape how we live and get along with each other. You know, I was just thinking about the unwritten rules that, you know, all of us, some some of us have grown up with a lot of unwritten rules. So some of those unwritten rules were actually just, your parents just needed to look at you and you knew what the rule they're telling you you're breaking. So for example, if you have, you are, um, you know, you're, sitting, you're in the living room, you live in the village and, you know, your parents are there and then some visitors start coming in and they are older people. You, all your parents needed to do is just give you an eye and you needed to wake up and go and leave their adults in this living room. Or they didn't even look at you because, you know, they are something that you have been socialized to. You were told when the adults come, when you have visitors, the kids have to get away. Okay, it's basically the big battling world we are all part of in sociology society refers to a group of people who live in a definable community and share the same cultural components so that is another definition of society that we use in sociology so you know those, those cultural components we're not just talking about the tribal culture or traditions they could they could also be at the university, you as a class, you know, um, this student, uh, this group of students, you maybe have a WhatsApp group, you have your cultural uh, components that actually make you a society. On a broader scale, society consists of the people and institutions around us, our shared beliefs and our cultural ideas. So we no longer take our societies for granted, whether small or large. Okay, so when you are referring to society, even if you come from a huge society or a smaller society, it doesn't matter. It is society and we cannot take, you cannot take anything for granted because um, in one way or another, it shapes your behavior, okay, and your relationships, okay? So, um, and I usually say if you're listening to my, um, you know, to my lessons, whether it's on audio or just um you know video like this one you can always pause uh, you need to have your notebook because there are so many other things that i will say in between uh, the slides or the powerpoints and they might not be necessarily retained but they are important for your exam so if i say it is important if i teach it it might be important for your exam okay 
So development of sociology, when you think about where sociology came from, uh, we think about um, the 19th century back in Europe, that is when the topic or the field of sociology began. Um, so there is a, a philosopher, sometimes called thinker. Uh, his name is Auguste Comte, who is known to have emphasized this, the scientific study of society. As a result of industrial revolution that was caused by rapid uh, political, economical, and social changes that happened in Europe, because of the uh, rapid urbanization that obviously must have led to excess social issues. We know what happens when, um, you know, when we become urbanized. There's so many other social issues that usually come from that. So um, some of those can be mostly society started to be affected, um, you know, to affect the human's behavior. Uh, maybe the social, the, the social services, um, and being unable to ignore those problems that affected man. So due to the immense changes that happened, the political, social arena, and economic platform, so researchers and scholars, uh, they had to begin to question the traditional meaning of life. They attempted to prove their beliefs using research methods, and that's what really emphasized the study of society. So the research was to explore more uh, of the societal uh, dynamics. Okay. Um, so the notable research figures in sociology, um, some other people that you might want to think about that you can probably be asked about are Emily or Emil Darkheim, Karl Marx and Max Weber. These are some of the people that contributed uh, the foundational theories in the late 19th, 1913th and um, early 20th centuries, of course, including Comte. Uh, so sociology discipline in, evolved to encompass diverse perspectives, including uh, functionalism, conflict theory, and symbolic interactions. So some of these are going to be defined in the next um, sessions or so. So over time, sociology has really expanded and has been able to cover various aspects of human behavior. When we talk about globalization, we also talk about the, uh, the impact that technology has on our society or even in our human behavior and other contemporary social issues. So uh, thanks to this expansion um, that has made sociology to become very dynamic and evolving field of study. Okay. Um, so Based on what we have talked about, I want you to pause and you answer this question. I want you to just put a pause on the slide and ask yourself this question. Is sociology really a science? Um, and that is a very important question to ask. Is sociology really a science? Is it a science? Just like psychology, yes, sociology is a social science, so it is a science. Like chemistry is a natural science, social science uses scientific methods as well. So if we use scientific methods, then it is a science. The study of science helps students to develop critical thinking. With critical thinking, you can evaluate claims you read or heard about on social media or newspapers. So when you use sociology, which is a social science. So sociology is going to help you as a student to understand or recognize pure arguments. Maybe you have read some things on, on Facebook or social media and wonder where did this come from? Was it investigated using the scientific methods? How real is it? How valid is it? So sociology can help you to recognize poor arguments using research. 
It also can be able to recognize fake research, which is sometimes called pseudoscience. It can also help you to reject arguments not supported by research because, you know, a lot of times you hear people talk even on um, on the media, sometimes people are on the TV, but they are really arguing a lot. But you have to wonder, if you have gone to school, you have to wonder and ask yourself um, what type of research has been done to prove the point that they are putting across. So you have to be kind of like have that critical thinking. Um, so sociology also help you establish that assumptions are not always true. Okay, so social scientists can question assumptions out there in the social media. Or you read a book, um, you know, whatever type of book that you read. Usually at the end of my slides, I will give you the references of where I have um, gotten my information from. So that is what is needed uh, for most of the people that use science. Uh, so hope by the end of this class you will be able to question the many myths out there because there are a lot of myths uh, and most of those myths can really mislead the society or you as a human being, okay? So there are many social, cha social sciences challenges and like natural science scientists, as social scientists face a lot of challenges. You know, sometimes natural science, we just need to get two chemicals and mix them in the lab and get a reaction and then you can analyze that. But when it comes to social scientists, we do face a lot of challenges. You know, um, when I was doing my research, my PhD research, or even my master's degree research, I faced a lot of challenges. Subjects in natural sciences like chemistry do not have opinions about behaviors and are always care about our thoughts. But social sciences may be considered the soft sciences, like, you know, for example, in Kenya, where it may be categorized as an art, same case with psychologists. You know, I know that we, you know, sometimes because of just, it's a soft science, but really, when it comes to researching even about human behavior or, um, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out how humans uh, behave the way they do, you know, why they say what they say, why children perform um, poorly in, you know, in, in slums or in public schools and things like that. That is a very intense science study that you have to do. But yet, sometimes we don't want to really acknowledge that sociology is a science. And that's why sometimes you will find out that even in Kenya, we still um, categorize sociology as an art while well, it's not an art it's a science i hope you know that from me um and not just from me there are facts to back it okay social sciences challenges continues so uh social science uh, as we say it faces challenges such as in navigating ethical concerns in research uh, you know when you are doing a research especially including human uh, subjects Sometimes it can be very hard to navigate those ethical concerns, especially when you're working with minor. I remember when I was doing my research at the level five hospital, I had to go through this um, ethical evaluation and make sure that I am providing enough, um, you know, support, psychological support, even for my uh, for my participants. And you know, some of those things you don't you don't have to do that when you're doing a science research you know a chemistry research something like that because you're not using a human subject so that can also be very very complicated so addressing biases in data collection interruption uh, interpretation can also be a very challenging uh, task to do as a social scientist and adapting methodologies to diverse cultural contexts you know when you're doing a research in a biology lab or a chemistry lab, you know, um, you use the same chemicals everywhere in the world. You know, if you're, if you're talking about salt or sodium, if you're talking about, you know, HCl, 
uh, hydrochloric acid or something like that. You know, it is the same. The formula of creating that is the same all over the world. But when it comes to human beings, you have to consider about the cultural context. Everybody has diverse cultural context and it is very very hard to fine-tune your research you know if you're boring maybe uh you know you are you're trying to replicate a research that was done in america in a place like you know kenya or kambani or something like that you really have to tweak a lot to make sure that you know you're making you're not you're not being biased by maybe the results that uh, came out of a research in UK and trying to, um, you know, have the same uh, findings in a different cultural context. So that is a challenge. Additionally, interdisciplinary collaboration and the integration of new technologies pose both opportunities and challenges. Um, so balancing objectivity while acknowledging the researchers uh, subjectivity and addressing issues like replication in studies are ongoing concerns and that's what I just talked about replicating a, a research in different cultural contexts not just across countries but even in the country like you know the same research that you do in Ukambani might really be very difficult to replicate somewhere in Kikuyu land because of cultural differences okay so the dynamic nature of society also demands constant adaptation to emerging issues making it crucial for social scientists to stay attuned to evolving paradigms and methods all right all right so another question that i am um still going to pose and i think this is a repetitive uh this is a repeat up a repeated um uh, slide which is fine i still want to ask the question after all what i have talked about what is sociology and i need to remind you that sociology is a scientific study of human social relationships groups and societies ecologists on the other side study an individual brain and how it works while sociology aims to understand human behavior, social institutions, social relationships, uh, we use scientific approach to study these relationships and behavior and rigorous research methods on various cultural groups. So principle of social embeddedness is emphasized and that is interaction between two individuals or um, group members. So we can say, you know, in a nutshell, that sociology really helps. Uh, and you're going to see as we continue with this class how helpful it is to have um, the science of um, society um, in workplaces, in our classrooms, in our institutions, in our homes, even and even in our villages, because sociology is really utilized to understand and analyze various aspects of society, contributing to practical applications in several areas. Um, for example, in institutions, we can use sociology to inform social policies. So helping the government and organizations organizations address issues like inequality poverty and education and of course that is something that needs to be done after research and sometimes we implement uh, you know we might implement a project uh, to provide services maybe to a certain group of people and then we might use the same science to come back and evaluate what is the progress uh, we might evaluate, you know, how beneficial has that project been, what needs to be changed, what needs to be removed from the projects and what needs to be added. So in business, sociology aids to understand consumer behavior and workplace dynamics. So when people are thinking about how they're going to promote products, they might use science um, to actually understand why uh, certain items are being bought more and why certain items are remaining in the shelves without being bought. In healthcare, 
It informs strategies for addressing public health challenges. We know that sociology, um, the science of society, must have been used a lot to um, understand, especially during COVID, during pandemics. Um, we know that sociology is still being utilized even to, um, you know, spread the good news about washing hands before eating. Uh, you know, how to control malaria in different countries, how and, you know, all those type of things and educating people on uh, at the grassroots level on how to prevent diseases. Um, in criminal justice, sociology helps to examine crime patterns and societal responses. Overall, sociology provides insights in, in insights that are crucial for creating informed decisions in diverse fields to enhance social well-being and foster positive societal changes. Okay. Okay. So when you talk about sociology perspective, uh, how we can use our sociology as a perspective perspective to highlight the many ways that individuals influence and are influenced by the social arena or social media arena. Think about how many people wear ripped jeans or how many people wear, um, you know, dark glasses at the funeral or, um, you know, people walk in a certain way or something is trending. It is because uh, we are you are we are usually uh, we, we are socialized or we are influenced a lot uh, by the social arena. So the sociology sociological perspective helps us to gain a better picture of the issues we are facing as a country, even as a county, even as the world. You know we talk about the war that is going on, immigration uh, problems in different parts of the world. Um, and even things like pandemic. Um, sociology is what allows us to see the world through various lenses. How will that apply to our day-to-day -day lives? So if we have an issue that is going on and, you know, I can talk about a lot of things, um, you know, even something as simple as lack of rain, um, you know, we can use sociology, sociological perspective to really understand how lack of rain is going to impact the whole country in the next maybe a few months in terms of hunger. Um, you know, how people are going to behave if there's no food, if there's famine, you know, increasing uh, violence and robbery and things like that because people have lacked something to eat and so they're going to maybe violently get, try to get food. Sociology can be, can also uh, mean a mega aspect or international social issues. So we are able to, you know, even go as far as talking about the war in Iraq, which really should be not a war in Iraq. Now we have war in Israel, in Israel. Uh, the COVID, COVID pandemic, we know that we have a lot of a lot of things to discover about what are some of the effects that or the aftermath of COVID um, pandemic, and we use sociology perspective, sociological perspective to understand that. I don't know if you have heard many people say that you know we're going to it's gonna take a long way, or even the scientists have said that it's gonna take a long way to really overcome from some of the things that the pandemic uh, did to the human. Uh, or the, as, the small aspect of just an individual, for example, why is a child in the city of Georgia being abused? Why is a student at Jomo Kenyatta University using drugs? Why is a student from Jomo Kenyatta is going to be killed in an Airbnb and then somebody cuts off their head or whatever it is that you know human beings do it might look small but using the sociological perspective we might be able to actually come to um, a conclusion on why this behavior happened I and you know as I say that 
um, with a very heavy heart after reading some of the news about the killings of the young student uh, that died uh, from Jomo Kenyatta. My heart goes to the family members and everyone that is hurting about it, maybe knew that girl. And I pray that God gives uh, the family comfort and justice be done and um, of course if you are in this class and you need to reach out because uh, you have been impacted in any in any way uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me I have enough training to help you with grief um, or you can go see uh, the school chaplain or the college chaplain uh, if you are struggling. So take care of yourself and stay warm until we meet next class. Thank you for listening.